Hey guys, it's Lydia here from Creator Studios, and today we're going to be talking about my 3D printed cube puzzles. So, let's get started. <laughs> I just want to start off saying I do not have my mic today, so if you hear the printers in the background, they are printing, and I do apologize about that. So, second thing I want to start off with is I do apologize for the long no uploads. Um, I have been pretty busy with school and uh, softball, but now that school is out and school softball has ended, now it's time to do a lot of 3D printing. So, as you saw, my trailer for the 3D printed cube puzzles. Um, I'm super excited about making this video. Now, I'm pretty sure there will be two parts. This first part will be um, making and showing you guys how to design them and uh, print them. And then the second part will be uh, basically just talking about them and what you can do with them. So, to start off, um, I did design these uh, cubes all on Fusion 360. And a big shout out to Devin over at Make Anything for teaching me and all of his subscribers um, how to design and make these cubes. Now, I was very inspired by this video and um, I got super interested in these puzzles and I decided to make a lot on my own. So, I have a big 5x5 puzzle over there with, uh, started off with 20 millimeter cubes. They're pretty big, uh, this doesn't look very big, but this is like the test prints you do for your printers, a 20 by 20 by 20 millimeter cube. And then um, each piece is actually pretty big. This is one of the pieces that has a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. It's made up of six cubes put together. And I'll show you guys that design process on Fusion 360. But that is the five by five puzzle. I have a four by four puzzle right here that is a little smaller. And then this is the one that we will be designing today. That just fell apart. But uh, this is what it looks like. And then my first uh, three by three puzzle is back here it is falling apart so I'm gonna have to build it again but then what I have printing over here on my Tebo Michelangelo one of the best printers I've ever had it is so reliable and I just press print and everything turns out great but I have a little cube holder that holds the uh, puzzle in it and again I will show you guys how to design that also on Fusion 360 so let's hop right on to the computer and start off this video so, um, starting off just with Fusion 360, so we are going to go over here and um, let's just start a new sketch. What you want to do is use a center rectangle. Now, if you don't have it up here, you can just go down to rectangle and um, then go down here and press center rectangle. You can also, there will be a little arrow as you can see there, and press that and it will pop up over here. So, I'm going to click that click the bottom and then press the center and pull it out. So to get the specific dimensions you want to use the dimension tool and um, I'm just going to go with a 18 millimeter cube. Okay, well we can just make this 18 also. So you want them to be perfectly squared then press E for extrude and extrude it 18 millimeters or however however you uh, made yours, how big you made it. So now comes the fun part. So what you want to go over to is create and go down to pattern. So now you want to make sure this is click to bodies and you're going to click one body and then you're going to uh, click a direction. So you want to click the bottom uh, part here and um, then you can do a 5x5, five 6x6, five, six six, 3x3 um, how about we just do, I can do another 3x3, three three, and then you want to put in here. So we had, it was an 18 millimeter cube, and we want it uh, 0.25 millimeters away. So we're going to do 18.25. And then uh, and we're going to do the same thing down here. So it's already set to 3, and do 18.25. So whatever your dimension of your cube is, add 0.25 millimeters and that is what you put in here so make sure so usually it's set to extent and you want to make sure it's to spacing so now we're going to go back to pattern rectangular pattern and bodies so you want to click all of these bodies every single one or it will not work there we go and then we're going to press direction and this time we're going to grab 
this outside corner and do the same thing 18.25 now you do not change this down here you leave this um, to zero because you don't want to make it all weird so then you press OK and there is your cube so now um, you can leave it like this but that would be a pretty lame cube uh, what you want to do now is zoom in press E for extrude and you're going to find a side so we're going to press the side, we're going to press one millimeter, press enter, and now that is one body. So that is a two by two, or a one by two uh, little piece. So now you can make any kind of shape you want. So let's say um, I want to connect it, these two pieces together. So instead, if I was on this side and I press extrude, or E for extrude, and I highlighted this, it would move this entire piece over one, so it would just be a two by two cube and we don't, or 2 by 2 square, and we do not want that. So when you have two pieces or more than two pieces connected, it will use the entire face. So you want to use a single cube, press there, 1, and enter. And so now we have an L shape. And I want to go over here, press E, and click this side. Oh, not there. You want to click right there, 1 millimeter, and enter. So now we have this cool shape. But I want to connect uh, this to this last square down here, bottom of this, which would extrude the entire thing down. You want to press E for extrude and highlight the top of this single box. So now we press 1, enter, and now we have this shape that goes like this and then down. So to make sure you don't um, mess up and connect the wrong things, what you want to do is press A for appearance and... Um, Double click here, press duplicate, duplicate, press edit, and then choose your color. Let's just go with red and drag and drop to your shape you want to color. So now we know that is its own shape. Just press exit uh, or escape, and there you go. So you have one little piece. Now you want to do that to the rest of the cubes. You can, or the rest of, yeah, the rest of the cubes. So um, just make sure that you connect them all but you can also what I do is have uh, a couple single maybe just one single um, cube so like I could leave I could leave this one by itself and then that would just be a single cube so again to make all the different appearances you have to duplicate one of them and then go and change the color Let's make it blue and drag and drop to to the selected or the the shape you want. I did actually leave one thing out. So as you can kind of see here, that uh, the previous shapes that you did see me build aren't here. So basically what you do, instead of going in here and trying to find um, each shape that you've already created, you can tap on one of the faces and press V and that makes it disappear so to get around um, each shape to create different ones as you can see this is a kind of weird shape basically you just tap on the face and press V so that is it is easier to figure out where you are in um, your shape so what I want to do as you can see here this one is single already so there's nothing to connect to it so I'm just going to create a new color and um, just turn it into that color so it is a lot easier to figure out how many uh, single boxes you have when you uh, hide the other other shapes that you created um, and like I said you don't really want that many single boxes because it makes it a lot easier to put together so um, if you want a harder puzzle um, a bigger puzzle would be easier like a 5x5 five five, um, and more but an easier puzzle would be a 3x3 three three or even a 2x2. Two two. Um, so I'm just going to finish this.
there we go so now we have all of our shapes now you can just leave it like this with um, with them nice and smooth I'm going to actually make a whitish color there we go okay so you can just leave leave all of them so let's turn them on so I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pieces here. I believe I counted that right. Um, and you can just leave it like this so it's a nice and smooth box. But to give it a little bit more character, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all most of these, except for one. Just um, clicking on it, pressing V. And now we're going to go to chamfer. So if, again, if you don't have chamfer up here, you do not have to have it up there. But then you just every time have to go down here. Um, so you want to put press chamfer and click every single side that is not an inside corner. And what I mean by inside corner would be like this, right? Let me orientate this, like this. So you do not want to chamfer these uh, these corners in here because it'll just screw it up and it won't look nice. So the number you can't really go back. So I'm going to do about a one millimeter chamfer. Uh, I've done that with a couple other ones and I think it looks pretty good. You can also do a 1.75. Maybe I'll do that. Mm. How about a 1.60? That'll be good. So you can do any size chamfer as long as your uh, Fusion lets you and doesn't give you any errors. So there's that one. We're going to go find it. We're going to turn it off, turn another one on, and do the same exact thing. So, okay, so now let's start over. So let's go to the text and click on one of the faces of the of the pieces. And then we're going to do the same exact thing as we did earlier. Just choose your font. Choose the size. And move it to where you want. So each font is different and you definitely want to uh, make sure it'll it'll work good on here. Um, not sure if I like how this looks. There we go. So now we can press extrude and it'll be easier to click on click on these and let's go negative three. Which means it's going to uh, go back three. Yes, so it's going to go into the material three millimeters. And there we go. So now we have a little, little easier way to put these pieces together. So now we know that all of these go together. And now, um, now you want to export each piece as its own. We are in Slicer. Or, sorry, we're in Kira, and I usually print all of my pieces for my puzzles on my uh, TiVo Michelangelo and my Tron XY, my new Tron XY printer. So I made a folder when I exported these. So I have a uh, puzzle cube uh, folder, and this is my old 3x3, three three. this is a 4x4, four 5x5. Four, five five. So here's the new 3x3, three three. and I'm going to print as much as I can. I'm going to do, we can do, I'll just do uh, two sets of, I guess one set of three and then the other set will be four. So now you can see that this has an overhang. So you do not want an overhang. Um, so what to do with that is you're just going to have to orientate the print. So I'm going to orientate it 90 and the same goes with this one. I'm going to orientate it this way 90 so that it um, doesn't need support. Now, some uh, prints do need support, 
because they might be really different and I have used support on my 5x5 cube and it actually worked okay I mean there wasn't really any problem everything still stuck together or fit together perfectly so if you really need um, support then go ahead and use it uh, just know that it's not gonna look perfect and it might give away the direction of how the print or how the cube is supposed to go but if you don't really care then it doesn't matter everything's good so I actually think these are a little bit too big I did make my 5x5 um, 20 millimeter pieces so I think I'm gonna go down I'm gonna command a uh, select them all and I'm gonna go down to 90 percent size um, you can do the same puzzle and bigger pieces I can make this a huge huge puzzle um, and do you guys can also do that you can make it super tiny let's see what it would look like 50 percent so that's a really tiny puzzle but go ahead and do that if you f want to feel free to change the size and um, now I'm going to over here make sure everything everything looks good 20 percent infill I do about 15 I'm going to change that to 15. You don't need these to be super strong, and I do the triangle infill pattern. Um, I usually do, on my Michelangelo, I do my PLA super hot because it is not a heated bed, and um, that just works for me. So then, everything else looks good. And then I have two perimeters, and let's see. Um, I had some trouble with my infill gap. Let's bring it down to... 7% see if that'll change anything I had some defects on my larger uh, 5x5 cube so we're just going to do changes to 3 by 3 one and insert the Michelangelo SD card so I'll do one of these on the Michelangelo and one of them on the um, Tron XY So this is a kind of vlogging uh, perspective right now, um, but I wanted to show you guys up close what the 5x5 cubes and the 4x4 cubes look like. So they're actually super difficult sometimes to finish. The 5x5 cube has a total of 29 pieces all together, and the 4x4 cube has, uh, I believe it was 17, and um, just looking at it down here, and there's a lot of pieces so I used all different kind of filament I did um, uh, most of it was actually all PLA and then I did a couple prints in my glow-in-the-dark and then a couple in the wood now uh, the wood is not always reliable so I did have to sand and stain it because it didn't turn out the greatest but uh, that cube actually looks pretty cool I've only finished it once and the way I finished it was looking on my computer on Fusion 360 basically um, taking the the cube apart and uh, putting it back together on fusion and um, on the normal cube because it was super difficult to actually put apart or put together so if you would sell something like that I would put the difficulty level too high um, but like I said earlier a 3x3 three three cube um, is super easy depending on how many how many pieces you put in it um, big or small, uh, but then the 4x4 cube actually has a lot of pieces for me, but it is kind of difficult. I was going to put a time lapse of it um, in the last clips, like you saw the 3x3 cubes being built, um, but I was taking way too long and then my phone died, so I didn't have the footage, but I never finished it and I never completed it. I've only completed it once, so... Um, just just saying that the the more um, cubes you have, like a five by five, six by six, however big you make it, it gets more difficult every time you add uh, another square. So um, let's check out what these look like up close, and um, I'll show you guys how difficult they are. So this is the wonderful five by five cube. So I am going to actually. Uh, 
uh, take this apart, but I'm just going to show you. This is about um, how much pieces there are, and this was actually built completely, like I said, but then I knocked it over while I was working on the TiVo Tornado. So now I'm just going to show you how many parts there actually are to this uh, this cube. So actually, like I, I'm not sure if I showed you guys earlier on the computer, but... Um, this does have a little logo on it that says 3D, so that actually helps out a lot with um, trying to put it together so you know what one side looks like. Um, so it just says 3D and then I believe there's one more piece here. And um, so that makes it a lot easier, but then everything else is super difficult. Um, so just keep in mind when you are building your cubes to not make it so difficult when you are putting each piece together because these pieces can go together in so many ways and have just a little part left but then this wouldn't fit so if I had this entire cube done and there was one two three four five um, spots five cube spots left and they were just random then this one fit so like this can go in so many ways it can be built in so many ways but um, it needs to be finished in one certain way. This is the 4x4. Now, uh, I printed this in just two colors. And this is probably my favorite one, even though I really can't build it yet. Um, only built it maybe twice. And um, this has quite a lot of pieces. Uh, a lot more than just a 3x3 would. And as you can see, uh, these are pretty small pieces. I do kind of like the smaller pieces than scaling it up like the 5x5 five five was. Those pieces were a little bit too big for me. So I might actually make a uh, print or a cube that is super tiny and micro kind of um, to make it a lot more difficult to put together but a lot more fun to spend more time on building it. So uh, you can do cubes in one color, two colors and or um, each each part could be one color, which I think is pretty cool. I might do if I have the time. But I really do enjoy making these cubes. They're a lot of fun to play with, and I might even start selling them. All right, guys, so that wraps it up for part one of the 3D printed cube puzzles. Uh, once again, I'm super excited to be doing this. Um, I love making these already. I've been making them for about two weeks now, spending most of my time on making this video for you guys and I really hope you enjoyed it and I really hope you stay tuned for part two of me basically talking about what a puzzle is kind of and how many puzzles you can 3d print so once again I hope you guys like this video do not forget to hit that like button down below and subscribe I would really really enjoy having you staying at my channel and keep watching my videos I really enjoy every one of you and I really appreciate every one of you subscribers and viewers. It helps me a lot, and I hope to get a lot bigger this summer on YouTube and hope to create some cooler videos for you guys. So, once again, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.